<laughs> hey everyone, we just got back from probably our most efficient trip as a show, upstate to Ithaca, New York. Usually when we go on tour, tensions run high, we're all irritated by something, we all miss the creature comforts of home, but something just clicked this time. There was something we all felt wash over us among the gorges of upstate New York, a shared emotion or an aura. I'm talking about good vibes. Past tours, we've had a surfeit of bad vibes. Not this time. This time, our vibes were perfectly aligned. When you're walking downhill at 2 a.m., drunk and high past unfamiliar houses in an unfamiliar town, that's good vibes. When you're walking beside a rushing stream at the bottom of a gorge, just hucking bottle caps and spent jewel pods into the water, that's good vibes. And it made me realize that we've carried on neglecting our vibes for far too long. We talk about some aspects of political praxis on the show, uh, listening to podcasts, posting about comic book movies, you know, doing politics. But there's an entire political dimension that we've yet to address. Now, I'm a supporter of Bernie Sanders. I want him to win the nomination in the White House. That course of events aligns with my political goals. But I recognize there is a vital debate going on for the future of not just the Democratic Party, but of the emerging left majority against austerity, against neoliberalism, against the ravages of the climate crisis. There's been much discussion lately about the likes of Sanders and Warren expanding the Overton window, where socialized medicine, debt forgiveness, Green New Deal, ICE abolition, and so on become mainstream positions. And were it not for the spoiler factor of the dozen plus other candidates in the race, I could see how a good faith debate between these two politicians would be salutary for the left. And in that spirit, I think it's time for the Overton window to expand even further. I think it's time to lift the curtains of that window and peer through it, to pierce the veil of reality and observe the realm beyond full of shimmering orbs. <laughs> Ima imagine, imagine if you will, the classic two-dimensional political alignment chart. The axes are economy, is social issues. Now imagine, a, imagine adding a third axis, expanding it into a three-dimensional political cube. Now imagine adding a fourth axis, turning it into what scientists call a time cube. There is one candidate who will accomplish this. If you listened to last week's premium episode, you heard our introduction to Democratic presidential candidate Mary Ann Williamson. She's a spiritual guru, a fellow best-selling author, a fellow friend of Oprah. <laughs> and she is the first true metaphysician to be a major party presidential candidate, as Nate Silver has recently declared. Like Sanders, Williamson is following a truly revolutionary path in politics. Most politicians will talk about the Department of Energy, but not our orgone energy. <laughs> they talk about our political alignment, but not our chakra alignment. They talk about third way politics, but not third eye politics. Williamson is different. Her discourse is the perfect antidote to neoliberal HR speak and centrist obfuscation. Her, po her positions include lifting the vibrational frequency of the universe, creating a unified field of energy on invisible planes, dispersing the thought forms of insanity that are tearing us apart, and enjoying good vibes with your friends. As we all know, God is dead. As people of my generation approach middle age, the late 30s, we are increasingly concerned with existential questions. Who am I? Can I trust my senses? Are dreams real? Without religion, <laughs> we suffer from a deficiency of mysticism, the sort that has existed in every society. Certainly, we must focus on material forces, but we cannot deny this primal need, this po current political factor. For most of us, we filled this void with politics anyway. Trump supporters have the Trump prophecy. Everyone else is just eating the lotus flowers of online. Perhaps your faith lies in the book of Robert Mueller. Perhaps you think your salvation will come from posting Twitter threads that are like, um, okay, buckle the fuck up, y'all, because today we're talking about how the Lego movie is just fucking gross to survivors of imposter syndrome. <laughs> If we are to find a way out of the subsuming of politics by spectacle, to return to a politics of materialism, who better to lead us there than a spiritualist with aggressive social democratic views conversant in the language of political mysticism? Now, Williamson isn't perfect. Her position on BDS is terrible. And I'm not sold on her stance on the mind-body problem. <laughs> 
But good <laughs> anti-capitalists make similar criticisms of Sanders and AOC. Like them, Williamson expands the political time cube, paving the way for more sophisticated, transcendental politics. Did you know in 2016, Williamson endorsed Bernie Sanders? Here's a quote from her open letter to Hillary Clinton. I want a woman president. Really, I do. A lot of us do. And yes, you're so qualified. And yes, we've known you forever. And yes, you know what to do from day one. We all get that. But none of that is good enough to get my vote or the vote of a lot of people I know. We only want to vote for you if you run like hell away from that corporate box you've landed in. I'm telling you, Hillary, the American people have become hip to what's happening. We know now that Wall Street runs the country and we don't like it. And for many of us, we don't want to vote for you if Wall Street runs you too. Now you might be worried. What if she takes votes from Bernie? That's a serious concern. Here's the thing. Bernie's target demographics and Mary Ann's are very different. Bernie is pursuing young voters, working class voters, African-American, Latino voters. Mary Ann appeals to a different demo entirely, one that we categorize in our best-selling book. I'm talking about the wine mom. You might have someone in your life, a wine mom, an Osti aunt, who nominally... <laughs> nominally agrees with Medicare for All, with breaking up the banks, with the Guaranteed Jobs Program, but fucking hates Bernie Sanders. Who's going to reach that person? It's not going to be you. She's already reported you to the FBI for being alt-right because you said that Chelsea Clinton's never had a real job. <laughs> <laughs> but you know who can? Oprah's spiritual advisor. Imagine Marianne sitting down with your wine mom, knees to knees, her face full of patient confidence, asking her, how can you hate Bernie Sanders when you and he are connected by a vibrating strand of energy like an umbilical cord? <laughs> Imagine, if you will, a political movement that could make Matt Crispin finally relax with divine energy. Before last week's premium episode, Marianne Williamson needed over 10,000 unique donors to qualify for the first primary debate. As of now, she needs fewer than 8,000. There's a hell of a lot more than 8,000 people listening to this show. So if you can, I hope you will join me in donating just $1 to Marianne Williamson to get her in that debate. I know you love to give feedback. You can even write in the comments of that donation from a Chapo Trap House listener. I want the orbs. <laughs> show me the orbs. Sanders Williamson 2020. Show, show me show, the orbs. Show, 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 show. Oh, 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 oh,